We've only been on here for 15 minutes trying to get everything together. But, yeah. you know, this you is the ashtray. Ashtray. Need I need an ashtray. ashtray, guys. You, you've been smoking a cigar for like five hours. You just realized you didn't have an ashtray. It's, it's all right, awesome. Right now. All right, I'm going to delete that call. That's all right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining the, what, the third week already of Behind right, the right, Band. Right. So the show where uh, Rick, Sean, and myself talk about everything and nothing. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Mostly nothing. <laughs> Mostly nothing, exactly. So we're happy to have you guys here. Uh, we try to keep it interesting and make sure that we're engaging your questions as well. So should you have a question as this continues, please put it in the comment section if we don't get to it. Um, or even more, if it's a really, really good question, maybe we'll even base part of the show on it um, if it's a good talk topic of conversation. So we always want you guys to feel like you are involved because you are so... Thank you for joining. And um, Rick, Sean, happy to see you guys. How was your long weekend? Mine was cool. Um, uneventful. Just uh, it was a long weekend. Yeah. Like, yeah. like most weekends are now. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you have kids too. So I imagine that has to be a little bit more yeah, uh, draining uh, uh, than like uh, Rick uh, or my weekends. I only have one kid at home. So, uh, but I mean, that, 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 you know, makes for some, uh, uh, you know, some, some interesting happenings, right? You know, so it's all good. It's all good. Can't complain. What about yourself? How was, uh, how was your weekend? Mine? Excellent. I was, I was watching Sorry. hockey. I oh, said, you know yeah. how was your weekend, Rick? Over. I was. <laughs> you got your ashtray, right? Watching your ashtray. Watching your ashtray. Hockey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I set yeah, off I the smoke detector and That's I had to put it on mute. <laughs> <laughs> my ashtray this, wait, this, she, it looks like a, a cup of a uh, soup i'm drinking a drink out of my ashtray oh yeah that, ashtray, that's awesome bro. that's awesome yeah i well, love that Laura, you set off a smoke detector yeah i set off my smoke alarm and i'm walking over now to open my window so um uh, sorry i had to put it on mute so you guys didn't all have to hear my uh my smoke alarm going on so you could, uh, take the battery out take the battery out you can't. Like, oh, it's it's you, one that's uh, like white. Also, yeah, Rick, you don't want to take the battery out, but it's one that's like wired into everything. Yeah, even if you so. take the battery out, they're still they're they're, they're hardwired. For, the the yeah. battery is actually backup. Yeah. So, well, hopefully, hopefully that helps. So, yeah. yeah. Hopefully you, never, you never have to find that out, Rick. No. <laughs> it's cold exactly. here today. It's like fifty-five degrees. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> So I have to, I've been relegated to smoking inside the house, which now we're getting back into pain in the ass uh, smoke detector territory, which I had forgotten about because it's been nice out. But it's supposed to go back up into like the mid 70s, low 80s yeah. within like two days. Horrible, horrible. We've been having um, mornings in the, in, the, in the mid upper 60s, which has been great. Um, nice. It's, you know, getting up to the mid upper 80s, but... The yeah. humidity is nowhere near what it was even last week, which is awesome. I agree. That's good. I agree. That's good. Yeah, you know, we are always talking about moving down to the Tampa area, but honestly, the humidity scares me so much. Like, I hate humidity. My hair can't handle it. My temper can't handle it. I just freaking hate humidity. <laughs> uh, we don't need anybody from up north moving to Tampa. Uh, so thank you so much wow. uh, for not coming. Because you know what? It's not for Did everybody. Did you feel that Southern hospitality? My, yeah, that was, Jeez, yeah, well, no, that's for you. Florida is not Southern. Uh, Florida, you know, it stops to the border of Georgia and Florida. Florida is, yeah. uh, you know, it's Florida's just the, uh, kind of drain for the U.S. It's just the drain yeah, part, for the part, U.S. Parts of Florida is very Southern. Very The handle is. Jacksonville. Yes. The uh, Jacksonville, Jacksonville area yes. is, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, uh, Jacksonville yes. is uh, Georgia. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, but I, know, would, Tampa I would agree is beautiful. That saying that the rest of Florida beyond the Panhandle is definitely not the South. Missy wants me to move down to Florida, so I have one. Oh, yeah, yeah, you could go to that coast to You're Orlando. I'm not Wolf living in Orlando. <laughs> no, Orlando uh, Central, so Central Florida. Yeah, yeah. It's, horrible. it's horrible. Why would you move to Florida and then live in the middle of the state? Because you're into theme parks, maybe, or something? Or? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would literally back, never, yeah, yeah. never live in Orlando 
because of the airport. Like the Orlando airport having to move people in and out of Disney World constantly right. would right. drive me bonkers. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't like theme parks, so Orlando would be a bit much for me to live. Yeah. You know, Not I liked 60. Disney World when I was a kid, but I don't need to live near Disney World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even as a kid, I, I mean, I didn't mind so much, but I was never into roller coasters and stuff like that. This, this is never my thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I, at, at, at 50, I probably enjoy theme parks a whole lot more because a lot of the, 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 the rides are sort of virtual or more experiential. Yeah. yeah, but just, you know, slapping my big ass on a roller coaster. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> the, the first Stop. time I ever went to Disney World that I remember, apparently I went when I was like one. Uh, um, just, uh, after you finish your uh, making your drink, uh, I'm being great. I was in, I was in first I'm, grade. Uh, and my dad wanted to take me on this alien ride. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can handle it. My mom was like, I don't think it's a good idea. And my dad was like, it's a great idea. And it was one of those where, I mean, it was creepy. Even as an adult, I acknowledged that it was creepy. There was like a bunch of fog and it was dark. And then like things came out and grabbed you and jumped at you. And apparently I lost it and they had to stop the ride and like <laughs> take me oh, off wow. the ride and stop the ride for everybody because I couldn't handle it. Always listen to your mom. <laughs> And then they took me on It's a Small World to make me feel better, which my mom hates because she hates the music. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a song that sticks with you years yes. after you leave that ride. In know? fact, it's already stuck in my uh, head now. Yeah, yeah, I can see it right now. <laughs> so, we're thinking about, of, we're uh, thinking about this. Not, you know, uh, the, here. Have a magical day. You know, the whole, it's like, what? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. What'd you say, Rick? You really want to say what do you, yeah. Uh, so what's your uh, first question of the day? So my first question of the day is what, if anything, do you find unenjoyable about smoking a cigar? I will start for me in situations, especially like right now, I hate getting ash all over everything. I hate getting ash on my laptop and the table and my lap and burning clothes. I find that very annoying. Mm -hmm. Oh. I don't know, uh, like uh, bad breath or, you know, no, no, uh, it's, 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 it's cleaning up the cigars the next day. Like if I'm sitting out and I've had a few and they're in the ashtray, I mean, man, you ashes, like no odor, no smell, no whatever. It's just ashes and kind of, you know, it's dusty, or whatever. But yeah, just the, the cigar that, 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 that you smoked and it sat out and uh, it, it's, it's pretty pungent. So that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's probably the least enjoyable thing is 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 cleaning up after a heavy yeah. day, like especially if you had if you've had people over and so forth, and and uh, you know you got to clean up after that. That's uh that's the least enjoyable part about the experience for me. Or if you smoke outside and you leave the ashes in the ashtray, and then it rains, and then it becomes like that ashy oh, solidified yeah, yeah, yeah. poop yeah, that is yeah, like you might yeah. as well just throw the ashtray away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think a, a bad cigar for me, a tight draw cigar, especially a cigar I was kind of looking forward to smoking. And when you uh, approach a cigar and it's uh, a bad row, too loose, too tight, and it just uh, affects me for the next two or three cigars because now I'm concentrating on that uh, next cigar. So uh, yeah, I, don't me, even, I, I don't even I muscle hate. through that. If I, get, if I get a cigar and it I doesn't don't, draw... I, 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 I meet. I don't. I don't try to. I don't use a draw poker. I don't try to find where. I immediately get rid of it. To me, it's like, mm -hmm. and, and I'm always just sort of, um, just kind of interesting when you talk to people. And it's like, and it, you give them a cigar. It's like, oh, this draws so well. To me, that's like the 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 the, the most minimalist of, of compliments. It's like you're basically saying that the car started, right? Like, yeah. Like at a minimum, a cigar should draw. That's you like, know? oh, I went to this restaurant and they cooked my chicken thoroughly. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I would expect so, so nothing less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, uh, guys, yeah, I don't, I don't, but then draw, I don't even, I, I immediately. Yes, yes and no. We're lucky that we can toss that cigar aside. Uh, yeah, if yeah, we're yeah. paying, to, you know, $10 for a cigar, uh, that cigar, that's a problem. And uh, I've been to events that uh, somebody came up to me and said, I'm sure this is a great cigar, but look at this. And mm -hmm. they, so yeah, but I, you replace again, it. I we, mean, it's, if we're there, we, we do. Have issue, but, I love uh, that because I can address it immediately. Yeah, right. But this is you know a kind of a hit on our armor when uh, because we take so much pride and uh, 
I, if you give anybody a thousand cigars from General Cigar, 90, you know, uh, 998 will smoke perfect. But the bad news travels very quickly. So those two cigars, hey, yeah, I smoked the Cohiba and CO. Yeah, the draw was tight. I'm like, oh my God, that just hurts me because I want that I want to compliment the roller, especially when somebody says a great draw, bro. Don't look at me. I did not roll that cigar. That's yeah. a compliment for the factory uh, workers. Yeah. Rick, I would agree with you. I mean, I agree with both of you. Sean, life is too short to, mo to smoke bad cigars. Should you light one up and it's like trying to suck moisture through a rock or on the other end, if it's just, it's so airy, you can't keep it lit. You're not getting any smoke. Both are equally obnoxious. Um, but I also agree, Rick, you're saying that we sort of have the luxury to discard that cigar should it not smoke well. Like, oh man, I picked up a, you know, whatever, a Macanudo. Not that it would ever happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> picked up yeah, a yeah. Macanudo and smoked in the draw was dying. I'm like, oh, well this sucks, I'll grab a new one. Like not yeah. everybody has that luxury. And yeah. I think that is a good way to sort of bring ourselves back and say, look, at, we are really lucky. Yeah, we are, we are. Yeah, but I would agree. Um, that is an annoying part about smoking a cigar. I also don't like when you're in public and you're smoking a cigar and somebody walks past you or walks near you and then they do like the really dramatic cough thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. know what? Uh, it didn't happen to me a whole lot though, so. It doesn't. And uh, again, I think cigar smokers are very key to that. Uh, there's not like a cigarette smoker because a cigarette smoker doesn't mind if it's affecting you because I'm going to be done in two minutes with my cigarette. But if a cigar smoker, uh, yeah. especially in a bar or a restaurant or, a, you know, a situation that everybody's not smoking, I'm very keen to, if I'm going to smoke a cigar, I kind of motion to the other people around me. Do you mind if I smoke the cigar? Because I don't yeah. want to, uh, you know, piss off anybody and no, make exactly. their night bad but I, I i agree i i get that sometimes i i remember i was smoking a cigar in new york walking mm -hmm. and uh there was cupping their mouth approaching me but they're going to the bus stop and the bus took off and all that smoke from the bus came up i said you know what you're willing to smell that but my cigar smoke was going to affect you like yeah. really okay let's yeah. do uh, two things left me in the room our, our garage with a car running and me smoking a cigar for 24 hours straight when you open my garage there's going to be a going a smoke pour out of that garage and i walked out but the guy that uh was in that car running that car he's going to be rolled he's out going out feet first <laughs> yeah he's yeah. going to be rolled out of this guy so I think it's uh, worse for you to smell a bus driving by you than the, my cigar than if you uh, smell that uh, cigar, but uh, it happens. But I, mean, I think I agree cigar guys are very keen to that. And I don't think in that situation, it's necessarily like they prefer the smell of the bus pollution over the smell of the cigar. It's more drawing attention to the fact that they're not happy that you're smoking. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. You know, Stay it's... <laughs> I mean, I, even as a non-smoker, you know, I'm pretty sure you'd prefer the smell of a cigar over bus exhaust. But um, we have a couple of questions before we continue. Everybody okay. wants to know, one, what we are smoking. And then also there's a question from um, YouTube asking, Rick, this one's for you. Is the La Traviata going away? Uh, no, uh, it, it's not. Uh, what we're going to do is kind of, maybe uh, next year take out of the market and redesign the box we're looking at some of these lines uh especially the lines that uh we've been out of the market for 25 years 20 years 15 years and updating the packaging so i can see that uh it will um uh, maybe be off the market uh for a short period of time and we'll relaunch it with the new packaging uh, that it was not a predicate blend, and that's that, that's another thing. Uh, a great news from the, the FDA. So mm -hmm. it was scheduled to either revamp, redo the blend, and then repackage it. Now we're just going to concentrate on the packaging and uh, uh, do the repackaging, but keep the blend alive. Cool. And what are you smoking? 
Uh, the uh, CAO, uh, of course, the CAO. Look out what I'm smoking. I just hmm. took the ban off, too. <laughs> Cohiba, Connecticut. So, Sean, there's a gentleman on YouTube who is also smoking a Cohiba, Connecticut, and he wants to know what cigar do you think has the most distinct first, second, and third in terms of flavor profile? What's, what cigar is there? Um, is there a comparison or just like maybe what? like the sort of parts of the cigar as you're smoking through it? What cigar though? He's just like um, I think I think he's just asking what cigar within Cohiba has the most distinct flavors oh. within the flavor profile. I think that's what I would assume. It's tough. Um... I don't know if there's one. Um, the most linear cigar that, that kind of doesn't change as much, maybe the blue. Um, it's kind of pretty consistent. Uh, the Honduran, okay. sort of earthy tobacco. But other than that, I mean, the others, pretty distinct change ups. Uh, the Royale may be more stark because of uh, the body. And, yeah. Um, that's pretty distinct as far as that first sort of quarter inch, you get that that, that really uh, pronounced sort of front end spice, you know, not over the top. Uh, but then that sort of lets up a little bit and it gets, uh, um, you know, more chocolatey, creamy. Uh, so maybe some more pronounced change there, but that's kind of tough. I mean, they all have some some degree of change, you know? Yeah, I would say that the for me, the Royale has the most distinct flavors, but I guess it just is very subjective, but, you know, yeah, depends yeah, on your palate. Tough. Depends on kind of what you're pairing. Um, speaking of which, we have Steve Crane from Tinderbox Easton. I know we've all love that guy. Dude, love BS. that yes. guy. Me too. So he's wondering, Sean, what you are pairing. A radio and a face for a TV. Tonight? That's a combination. He has a, a voice for radio and the face for a TV. I know. And that's not, uh, you know, you don't yeah, get that often. And, and he's built like a, a, a shit brick house, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basil Hayden. Awesome. Something, uh, but uh, kind, kind of getting back to uh, where you were asking, Sean, back 30, 50 years ago, cigar makers, when I was told for Benji, wanted the one dimensional cigar, that uh, cigar that kind of like a cigarette, it starts midway and finishes the same way. And that was the technique that a lot of manufacturers were using back in the day in the 70s, the 60s, and the 50s. And then in the 90s, uh, we started to, uh, you know, the fans of your line started to say, we want some changes. And so today, I don't think a lot of manufacturer gives you that one dimensional cigar because that's not a cigar that uh, has a lot of fans for that. They want a mild cigar, but they want some flow of the, the uh, not the body, they want mm -hmm. the body to be the same, but yeah. they want the flavors to kind of change and take them on a roller coaster kind of ride. And that is what uh, I think every manufacturer tries to give their fans for their line. Yeah, and I would argue that it's more difficult to blend a complex cigar that is uh -huh. mellower. I mean, that takes some real, real skill. It's easier to yeah, definitely yeah. blend something full bodied with a lot of complexity, but there's only right, so right, much right. you can do to keep that cigar kind of in that mellow box. That's a great, a great point. It is very hard because you think uh, the easiest cigar to make would be, uh, you know, a, uh, a flavorful cigar. No, the easiest cigar to make right now it's strong a whole body cigar. Yeah. That is a yeah. the easiest cigar. So in, anybody that comes to us and say we want you to make a house blend for us, and we want body, bro, come back tomorrow. I have fifteen <laughs> samples for you. Yeah. If you approach us and say I want flavor and complexity uh, for that cigar, oh, uh, come back in six months and I'll have two or three cigars that we could start to work on. But yeah. flavor is very difficult to work. Body is very easy to accomplish. Agree, agree. 
Well, it looks like we have a good amount of participants. Uh, we've got Brian on here. Hello, thanks for joining. Um, Steve was asking if we were doing any more traveling. Um, I don't know about you guys, I'm doing drivable stuff. Nothing, yeah, I mean, no planes or anything. Yeah, Hotels no a couple travel. nights. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. We miss everybody, uh, I, and I, I miss seeing you guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. I miss uh, seeing everybody live, and uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do uh, one or two uh, uh, events live in October. And so right now, I've been in uh, touch with the uh, the uh, reps and the uh, shops, and it's kind of, kind of lining up. Don't announce I'm going to come. Uh, mm -hmm. Just say it's going to be a Zoom event. If I can't come, surprise, it's not a Zoom event, is live. Yeah. But I don't want to say I'm going to be live and all of a sudden we have to cancel and do a Zoom. That's a letdown for me. So yeah. I yeah. think uh, uh, in October, I will. Uh, I know uh, that uh, uh, Doug is really wants me to go back on the road because uh, Bones is just uh, taking off for us and we're saying to ourselves, if I was out there really supporting Bones the way – the fans connect with a CEO and me, mm -hmm. what would Bones be like today? And yeah. you, uh, with your green, uh, can you imagine really talking to everybody about green and the guys are, ah, I don't smoke mackinac oil anymore. Bro, try this one. And yeah. that that is easier for us to connect with Zoom. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's harder, but. Yeah, you know, Zoom, <sighs> It's hard to compare going somewhere and being in person to doing a Zoom or like, you know, um, a Skype event. However, I do feel like with the time I've had at home, I've been able to sort of spread the good word of the green in a, in a different respect, you know, being able to do the videos yeah. and the interviews and the bloggers and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm not getting yes. out and, yes. Doing yes. Stuff, and I think that's important, but I also think I'm getting even a wider reach this way to some. Level. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, there's more opportunities for us to do two or three zoom events a day versus one mm -hmm. event a day. So you guarantee you're right that we can meet, reach more people. But I've always looked at Zoom as like a CD of your favorite band. Mm -hmm. And But, you know, when they come to your local arena in your hometown, if you're a fan of that band, you want to see them live. You want to see them live. So I think Zoom equals to me seeing me or playing my CD. And yeah. then when I do a live event, it's me live and uh, it's kind of more exciting to see that band live sometimes than just oh, yeah. playing that CD. I CD. mean, it's definitely Does not. Does anybody so. listen to CDs anymore? I say CDs, like yeah, I, I was I was kind of yeah. letting you walk with it, man. But <laughs> yeah. um... I went to a, a Lionel Richie concert last year with Missy, and part of the ticket price was that they gave you a CD, a CD of the live performance. I'm like. I don't have a CD player. <laughs> the funniest like, thing. Nice gesture, but also I'm never going to listen to this. <laughs> right, 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 right. All right. Y'all so are gay to you getting that. I know we've digressed a little bit here. Oh, and then I left it at Misty's house intentionally because I didn't want to take it home because I wasn't going to do anything with it. And then she made an point to bring it to me. <laughs> When I saw here, her, you left this coaster at my house. Here, I'm like, oh, thank she you. She's such a fan of that uh, uh, that guy, Lionel Roma guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. That's how we first connected. We were, I think, the first time I worked with her, we we're just like making idle chit chat, and she's like, well, you know, what kind of music do you like listening to? I'm like, I don't know, kind of all over the board. It depends on my mood. Recently, I've been into the Commodores, and she's like, what? Come to find out, Lionel Richie's her guy, and we've been best friends ever since. <laughs> yeah. And I know, Sean, you just did your, um, in the last, I think, two weeks, you just did one of your Friday night videos. Yeah, on... not this past Friday, but the Friday before. It was, yeah. uh, it was on uh, uh, Lionel Richie, the Commodores, and Friends. So it was, uh, it was of course, Lionel Richie, the Commodores. Yeah. Uh, also, some of the songs that were sampled and covered or uh, people we produce for us. It was a it was a good show. Okay. Um, I don't so, forget my by my best uh, Cher. Cher is a unbelievable singer. Yeah, uh, she Cher. is. 
Yeah, so really Cher has my heart. Is, list, but... Wait, wait, wait. Is Cher really your favorite? As female artists? Yeah, well, yeah. for sure. For sure. Really? Wait, wait, wait. Which, yeah. which, I, which, I would, which, wait, 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 which, which share, like share, like Sonny Bono and share, or oh, share, like, share, like, 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 the, like, like the Gleva, uh, the, the uh, Diva Glam, uh, I definitely the latter. No, well, I don't know, I'm, just, I'm trying to get there, I'm just trying to, no, I, I, I think that, you know, Susan was going to take me to Vegas to see share, and when she just approached me about the opportunity, I think there was a tear, for me in my eyes, swear to God. It's amazing. But, it's, but we didn't see her, but I know I would be just that guy. Yeah. Just crying, singing, just sharing. Listen, and she, listen, I know listen, she's going to sing to me only. I've been on God's green earth for 50 years. <laughs> you are officially the first dude I've ever met in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's come out of his face with Cher in his Bro, favorite. But, Cher but, is an interesting choice. This, I mean, uh, uh, can we agree? Can we agree? Uh, Cher has an uh, amazing voice. She is not... Listen. Sean, who's respect your favorite Cher. female vocalist? Tina Marie. Okay. Rest her soul. Okay. Mine would be... It's. I'm always waffling between either Grace Slick or... No. Uh, um, you are like wait, 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 you you are like <laughs> stuck in like wait, how, you you're twelve like how do you know Grace Slick? I love Jefferson Airplane. Wow. Well, you should have yeah. been on my Cohiba Nightcap when I highlighted music from the Bay Area that changed. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I and I did Grace Slick and Jefferson Airplane and also did some Creedence Clearwater. <laughs> Clearwater Revival, of course. I did some uh, Sly and the Family Stone. I did that was, that was a good show. Ooh, but I like Sly and the Family Stone. Wow. Yeah, I do, do. yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. All right, so, so, so. Um, yeah, or Stevie Nicks. I think typically Stevie okay. Nicks tends to be the one I, if I absolutely had to choose, like her voice is just so Stevie Nicks, Stevie incredibly Nicks is up, haunting. Uh, is up there with me. Stevie Nicks, I yeah. mean, and, and 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 Fleetwood Mac in general is just there. Yeah. They're, yeah. But Fleetwood Mac when they were more bluesy, it's kind of that's more of the era that I liked. But to so lost kinda... all respect for uh, Stevie when I found out from a source that knew the girl that did it. Uh, she was a cocaine fan and she yeah. did so much cocaine that her nose was completely ruined. And so what she did is stop. Uh, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to save you from yourself, Rick. <laughs> okay. There's what's, another what's way the next you're... question that we have? Uh, <laughs> So, so system, without using your nose or uh, your mouth. Oh my god! Uh, okay, uh, so uh, we we have an entire show based okay. on cigars and pop culture and stuff. So we can continue this conversation down the line. But for right we now, we can't continue this exact conversation. No, we cannot continue this exact yeah. conversation. This is going to be more of a, a behind closed doors conversation. It is PG. Yeah. This is a PG <laughs> show. So. They can't see Move all on. the conversations. Another, yeah. another okay. question. All right, we're getting back question. on track. Do you guys, have you ever felt judgment, real or perceived, from somebody who doesn't work in the cigar industry and be like, seriously, you work with cigars? No, it's actually the opposite for me. Okay. So I, I'm just amazed that people who have, like, no real frame of reference for, for cigars or uh, uh, very, very loose associations with it, never, like, they just think it's, like, the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. And then, and they always have somebody that's like hardcore into cigars. So you, you, you're always the, the, the most interesting person around, uh, yeah. uh, you know, being a cigar maker, you know. When you're checking into uh, like a, a flight or your hotel or restaurant and you read that, uh, that uh, card that we have all have, uh, the General Cigar card. And so what do you do oh, in the cigar business? You know what? I deal with a lot of people. You're the first guy that ever mentioned cigars to me. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I don't smoke one. What do you do? Oh, it's just, you know, go around and uh, travel and uh, showcase our cigar. That's cool. So 
I agree with you, Sean. I think uh, when you mentioned that what we do, uh, they will say, say very quickly, I don't smoke cigars, but I think that's cool. Uh, yeah. I really do think mm -hmm. that's cool that what you do. Yeah, yeah. So that's, it's I a total think, opposite for me. I think I've only felt like overt judgment once. This one was like, oh, you, you work with tobacco? I was like, oh, okay. But I would right. say yeah, that 99.99999% yeah. of the time, people are intrigued. I have a rule of thumb. <laughs> like you, I take Ubers to the airport in the morning because I only live about 15 minutes away. And um, it's obviously less expensive to take an Uber there than it is to park for five days. <laughs> anyway, so if it's super early in the morning, I will... The Uber's like, oh, or, you know, business or pleasure or whatever. And if I'm in the mood to talk I'll, and I'll say business and they're like, what do you do? Sometimes I'll come up with just ridiculous stuff like, oh, I'm an, I work in insurance or, oh, I work in marketing or I'll give them something super vague because I'm just not in the mood to talk. Because if I ever say, oh, I work for a cigar manufacturer, they're like, wait, what? Right. And right, then they right, want right, to right, have right. this whole conversation with you, which Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes I'm just not into it. Um, I would think. Yeah, it would I would be say more people are you. interested and they want to talk about it. Yeah, I, th I think they're more curious uh, because for me and Sean to say we're in the cigar business, okay, that's kind of normal. You're mm -hmm. a dude and you smoke cigars, but for you, you being a yeah. young lady in this business, I would say I think that like you smoke cigars like that question comes up like, yeah you smoke cigars like oh my god and it's not oh my god that's cool it's oh my god i don't know how to take this is it bad or good that you smoke cigars so, so I, I i think it's uh you, you you do get judged more than we would ever get judged and uh sure. smoke a cigar mm -hmm. yeah but yeah i mean the same thing like you were saying with the the card i always feel i'm always hesitant at the hotel and they're like oh you know what company do you work from like general cigar because i don't want them to, think, them to think i'm gonna like go and smell up the room with my cigar clothes or <laughs> whatever else but you are <laughs> but i am um but yeah i mean people are interested and same thing with like people on planes or uber drivers or whatever they're like you know i've been traveling for a long time and i talk to a lot of people and never have i met someone who works for a cigar manufacturer yeah. So well, there's another point that you know I, I'm amazed that you talk to people outside because I, I tend not if I go to the airport I am quiet when I get on a plane mm -hmm. I don't talk to that passenger sitting beside me I put my earphones on I'm zone out I don't yeah. talk to Uber drivers cab drivers it's amazing my daughter and wife always said to me you are a talker. You love to talk to people, but when you're in certain situations, you don't talk at all. So uh, I do not talk to the planes. I do not talk in cars and Ubers. I don't want to share yeah. my stories with you, and I don't want you to share your stories with me. Ew. Where are you going? You know? There's nothing worse than coming from like a cigar fest style event and going to an airport or something, and all your Uber driver wants to do is talk. You're like, I don't. I do not want to be rude. That is literally the last thing in the world I want to be. But seriously, I have absolutely no interest in this conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for me, talking to people, it's kind of just being nice, like somebody sitting next to you on the plane. If I don't get my headphones in, you know, on time, they're like, oh, you know, where are you going? What do you do? And sometimes if the conversation's good, it can make the time pass very quickly. Other times I'm like, dear God, flight attendant, please come save me. Yeah, nope. I don't talk on the airplane. Nope. I mean, I sleep. No, on I don't. Yeah, no I matter don't, what time of the day. Yeah, ex the exactly. Is, I sleep on the plane, bro. The minute they shut that door, boom, I'm, I'm out. out. I'm out. I'm out. You guys are I don't so care lucky. If I just drink a, a cup of coffee, I'm out. Okay. You never drink the coffee on planes, Rick. You as a no, journalist should know this. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> they don't wash those little containers. No, I know. And no, you know no, those cups are like half-heartedly cleaned. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't wash that reservoir, but I don't need I'll their take, food. I'll take like a 5 a.m. flight and typically have to lay over somewhere. And from five until six o'clock when I'm landing in Detroit, I am wired. 
And then I take a seven o'clock flight to go to like a 7 a.m. flight to go to Tampa or something, right? And as soon as we're descending into the final destination after like three hours of travel, that's when I fall asleep. And oh. it is the most frustrating thing in the world. <laughs> so I envy that you guys can fall asleep on a plane right away. I snore. I don't care. I don't care. All right. So, uh, kind of, uh, you know, I'll ask you a question. When you're doing your events, what is the uh, the question that kind of stumped you? Like, wow, that's a, you know, didn't ever ask that question of me. That's one. And what's your worst question that you have to answer all the time? What's the question that every event that that question is asked? And if you want, I can so, uh, start it. So the question that I I felt like was purposely trying to stump me because for the most part, people are cool, but I feel like occasionally you'll get the person who's trying to be, you know, and they asked me what the, the latitude and the longitude of our farm in Ecuador was. I was like, Okay, seriously, like, why would you expect me to ever know that? Like, I don't know the latitude and longitude of where I live. Let you, know, tell, live you know what? Where That's a great question. Is. Buy a, I buy a, I was saying a dirty word, but yeah. buy a, a OSA. It has the, you know, all those numbers that you could Google Earth and go there. Yeah. Uh, kind of like that is when they asked me a farming question. All right, Ricky, if there's a mountain that you're growing tobacco on, do you want to grow it in the, the, the section that gives the sun first or the side that gives the sun second? I've always answered the question the same way. That is a great question for a farmer. Don't ask <laughs> me that. You know, because we don't farm. We just buy tobacco and we start to work with it. So anything yeah. tobacco related in the factory, I can answer. But why they pick that area to grow tobacco? Ask that farmer. I don't know. I don't know. Apparently, you two look way smarter than me because I don't get asked those hard questions. <laughs> really? It's the glasses. Yeah. 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 No, what about- I can, I can think, can't think of any question that really like stumped me. Like, huh? Um, honestly, and I hate to say it, the probably the most annoying question that that. I get asked, you know, been in the business for 10 and a half years, and I still get asked this question on almost every interview, and I get asked it several times at, during the event is, how'd you get started in the cigar business? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, I get yeah. it. It's like, you, you answer it, you know, but it's yeah, like, yeah. man, like, like I, at, at some point, it's okay, just kind of Google me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, all I don't- out there. I don't hate the question. I don't hate it, about but it's women. like, man, I've been asked. No. It's so, you know, it's like, yeah. yeah. And I get asked a lot about, you know, being a woman in the cigar industry. And yeah. I don't, I don't hate the question. I'm not opposed to answering it. I guess I would prefer, you can still touch on that subject matter, but ask different questions. Yeah. You know, different sides of it, different, I don't know. So probably my least favorite would be what's, what's your favorite or what's good like that drives me crazy because yeah, it's right, so right, subjective right. what's your favorite yeah, cigar yeah. that's yeah. like yeah yeah you know, what's which of my kids are what, my favorite? like yeah who cares who is the day who cares what yeah. i'm enjoying doesn't mean that uh, a pill of beans to you you judge your cigar you mm-hmm. judge your palate you judge Tell me what, what you, you like. want what, to pay for yeah you, like? what, what, yeah. you know uh, rappers please like? yeah. don't buy a cigar for me you no know, exactly to, to make me happy and say, especially a cigar that you're not going to like. Who won? Yeah. I didn't win because I told you a cigar that you don't like. Mm-hmm. And you bought a cigar that I like, but you don't like. So there's no winner uh, to that. Yeah. Yeah. And but, usually uh, people one time, just... Yeah. One time I was asked the question, what, you know, kind of that same thing, but what was your most exciting project, fun project you ever worked on? What was your scariest project you ever worked on, and what was uh, the uh, uh, the saddest product you, you know, or uh, the worst project? And that, oh, wow, I've never been asked that. I like that. Yeah. And so that was uh, that was cool when that guy asked me that question because it opened so many doors. Yeah. Uh, to sharing stories. Yeah. 
Make yeah, exactly. Steak. Make you steak. And yeah. those are questions when I get stumped and like, oh my God, that's a great mm -hmm. question. But uh, let me ask you guys, if these guys do stump you, and it's hard to answer it truthfully, do you kind of lie your way through that no. question? Or are you stopping to bro? That's a great question. I don't know. But yeah. you know what? The beauty of what I do, I have so many mm. people that I work with, I can get you that uh, question asked for, uh, for you. Mm -hmm. But right now, great question. Here's a good cigar because you stumped me. Yeah. I don't know that. But I hate when somebody lies and makes it up. Oh, my God. Uh, I, you know that what? will instantly come back and bite you in the ass. Yeah, I mean, I all agree. I have to I do agree. is Google it. Or yeah. talk to somebody else. I mean, it doesn't do, you're not doing yourself any favors yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Or you're not doing the customer any favors. I mean, if somebody asks me a question and I don't know it, if there's like a level of it, like, well, I, what I can tell you is this, but that's actually a really good question. I will have to consult with this person, that person, or that person. I was like, but I really do appreciate you asking me because that's a question that I had never even considered and it keeps me what? learning yep. and growing. So thank you. Right, I try please. to just make it. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And so uh, when you stop, because again, blends, that is when I get stumped a lot. And they say to me, what were your blend from the Lagoria series in? Bro, really? That was now going on 15 years ago that I made that blend. I don't know. I, I just don't want to. Oh, the wrapper is this, and the binder is this, and the filler is that. I'm so fearful that somebody's Googling it and they ask me the question wrong on yeah. your Facebook page is this. Oh my God. So yeah. I would say, you know what? Great question. I should know that. I guarantee you, I'll know the wrapper of every cigar I've made. Mm -hmm. but the, you're, the you're, you're getting old, that. Rick. You're getting old. You're getting old. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I can tell you leaf for leaf every single blend I've ever done. Going back to 06. Damn. Leaf for leaf. Well, we have two blends to uh, remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Three, three, blends, sorry. three blends. Three blends. <laughs> Yeah, I will leave it yeah. at this. I yeah. am never upset if I do not know the answer to something, if they are legitimately trying to just gain knowledge and ask a question. When yeah. I do get mad is when you know they're specifically trying to stump you because they're just you. trying yeah. to think of the most ridiculous question to put you on the spot. And, um, but I will never be upset should I not know the answer to something because I'm like, honestly, that's not even something I ever even thought about. That's a really good question. Right, right, right. And it uh, happens, I think it happens to me every uh, stop, you know, either there's going to be a question or somebody shares a knowledge of, about uh, cigars with yeah. me. I said, bro, that's, I didn't know that. And I'm going to steal that from you. I'm going to take that with me for the rest of my life and share that knowledge with you yeah. Problem uh, with really everybody just made yeah. it up before they told it to you right yeah 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 sean yeah. what's a really good question that you've been asked in an interview that stands out anything you're like wow that was a really good question actually uh but now i know where rick got it from uh rick and i did a in uh an instagram live together like you and i did at one mm -hmm. point and during that uh ig live he asked me what was uh my most fun project uh, the most rewarding and scary, uh, I guess, or I guess, kind of maybe the, the worst project. So, yeah. so that that was a really good question because you kind of really think was about what what made this pro uh, uh, project special, or you know, what did you learn from uh, this project? And yeah, that sort of so that that was probably the most interesting question. I, uh, that's very cool. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of fairly recent. So, uh, that, yeah. that's that's sort of top of mind. Rick, actually, I think both of you have done an interview with um, Reinhard for yeah. Light Em Up Lounge. Yeah. 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 He yeah. asks mm -hmm. really good questions. Good. Very good. That was a great Very interview. good. Yeah. You can, like, uh, very you can see he does some research before he mm -hmm. get, uh, uh, you does the uh, interview. Yeah. He really does. During the yeah. interview, he's like, okay, now, Laurel, I understand that you hate pickles, so how do you <laughs> feel? And, like, goes into this thing about food and cigars, I'm like... Oh my God, you did your research. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so do you really hate pickles? I hate pickles. Who hates this always, pickles? This is always the example I use when we're talking about not liking the question about what's your favorite cigar. I'm like, 
do you like pickles? And like, yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. I don't, I hate them. If they touch my fries, I won't eat those fries. If they are on top of my burger, I literally rip that part of the bun off. Have you ever had fried pickles? So we we know that she, she's never been pregnant. So that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know because she yeah. that may make her like them, but yeah, yeah. Um, pickles, man. That's, fried pickles I've had before. I just so nothing. Anything no. pickled, like cucumbers, are fine. It's anything that has been prepared pickled, like pickled onions, pickled radishes, any of that yeah. crap. Hate Pick, it. Pickled onions are disgusting, by the way. Yeah, th those are disgusting. What? They're disgusting. No, no, yeah, I, look, for the, no. another show. There's not a lot of foods that I refuse to eat. Like there's foods that I prefer, foods that I might not like, but I'll eat to be polite. Pickles, I will not eat. I will not eat them. That's good to know. <laughs> One right. of the first times that's, I ever went a, out to dinner. That's the reason we put the two together to learn about each other. Good time. to know. One of the first times I ever went out to dinner with my in-laws when I first met my well now husband. Um the pickles come on the side of the plate. And so Alex just like pulled them off the side of the plate and then ate them right away because like we just, that's what he did. He know the, like, the less time the pickles are on my plate, the better. And so his dad was like, oh, what are you doing? And he said, oh, Laurel doesn't like pickles. And he took his pickle and he rubbed it all over the top of my burger bun. And Ooh. I was just sitting there horrified. Your, your, your horrified. future father-in-law did that? Yes, I mean, this was like eight years ago when we had first started dating, and he didn't wow. know to the extent that I hated pickles, and Alex was like, just switch top buns with me, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, all right, there you go. Yeah, you go. So, so, right, so, so, so Rick loves share and you hate pickles, got it. Yeah, so now we, uh, we've all taken something out of this, um, but uh, how do we even get on this subject? Oh, we're talking about good questions and bad questions and stuff. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I love doing the interviews. People do ask good questions. Um, I just, I do like the interviews and stuff where people really go out of their way to maybe ask you a similar question or touch on a subject matter, but go about it in a way that's different. And that's why I like that we do this, um, is because we have the opportunity to kind of talk about different things and we know the questions that we do and do not like. Mm -hmm. Um, so no, it's just been, it's been fun, but, um, we probably are going to have to wrap up soon. I know Rick has another event after this. Um, but is there something, anything about the industry that you guys would change if you could, you know, whether it be regulations or just the lack of an ability to smoke in a lot of places, if you could I mean, have any sort of power over the industry, what would you change? At this point, um, you know, I, 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 I want to want to change uh, uh, our inability to really interact and travel or anything. So it's kind of hard, like like all the, you know, whatever I thought was sort of a, uh, uh, you know, the thing I wasn't crazy about with the industry, I miss it all now. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, l luckily we got some, some, some relief uh, from a regulatory standpoint here, here recently. Um, right, right, right. That's good. Absolute relief, but certainly, uh, uh, a little bit more breathing room. So, so um, as cigar makers, that gives us, you know, some latitude from a creativity standpoint. I'm excited about that. So that was the big sort of elephant in the room that everybody wished that they could change. And yeah. We got a little yeah. bit of on that. So uh, everything else, I think, is uh, is 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 workable, so to speak. You know. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Uh, for you me, know, yeah. you know, as far as like wanting more creative control, I mean, there's we can still develop and blend and you know, kind of work within our box. And like you said, you know, the last couple of weeks have been better. I mean, that was huge for us, but I just, I wish that we weren't just in a microscope all the time. Yeah. You know, everything we did had to be, you know, we have to think a hundred steps ahead to make sure that it's going to fit within the mold. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it would be the difference between a cigar smoker and a cigarette smoker uh, to get that message out there. The reason we enjoy cigar is purely for the enjoyment of that cigar. It's yeah. not a, a desire. It's not a nicotine. Uh, I, need, yeah. I need that cigar. Uh, I, I want to kill somebody. Uh, so I just separate us from the cigarette uh, guys. And, then, you know, uh, there's a huge difference between cigarettes and uh, cigars and that yeah. we can spend three or four hours of that topic, but uh, 
realize that what we're doing is a hobby, not a, this, uh, you know, uh, for that cigarette. So yeah. I, to me, it's just knowing the difference before you judge me, know the difference between a cigarette smoker and the uh, cigar smoker and why we smoke each other, you know, the cigarette or the cigar. Yeah. And that's yeah. actually a really good point because cigars, I mean, it's an entirely different experience. I mean, sure, people will smoke a cigarette because they need that quick hit to relax and people will smoke right. a cigar to relax, but it's right. it's so vastly different. Yeah, Do you guys smoke is. anything else like a pipe or a hookah or cigarettes or anything? No. no. I've never lit a cigarette. Uh, I've never, I smoked uh, maybe one poke of a pipe. Okay. Uh, but no, uh, hookah, I've never smoked a hookah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, you know. I'll smoke the hookah I think once. Yeah. 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 See, I smoke hookah. But you know what? Uh, I don't judge anybody. Yeah, if you're wrong a, with it. you know, yeah. pipe smoker, cigarette smoker, uh, hookah, hookah, I don't care. I really don't care. Uh, yeah. Whatever floats your boat, good for you. Uh, yeah. This is a great country we live in. You can choose one of the four or five, whatever you want to smoke. Uh, it's up to you. So. Yeah. Now, as we kind of wrap up here, we had somebody giving you some um, some praise for the bones. Let's see. Having a bones with a 14-year Irish whiskey. Great pairing. Greetings from Pittsburgh. Good job, Ricky. Um, Thank, so that's you. Awesome. Right. Thank you. And then we do have the question, when you pair a drink with your cigar, do you find a drink that complements or conflicts? Um Strong whiskey plus full cigar or spicy cigar plus sweet drinks were given as examples. I guess I think compliments, but based on his question, he would, what he would think that I do is conflict mm -hmm. because um, I do like, I'm not really heavy into scotch, but if there's by right. chance that I'm uh, drinking a very, very peaty scotch, I'll go with a Maduro with a little bit of spice or, or if um, the only th only time that doesn't work, if I'm having a really you know, a mild cigar, I won't go with a super hot bourbon with that, but also won't go with a super hot bourbon if I have a spicier cigar. Like, like I, I do sort of mix up those profiles a little bit. So I guess in terms of this question, I probably conflict more, but to me it complements better, but I understand what you're saying. Okay. And then um, there was a question from YouTube. A gentleman was wondering, he also wanted to say that he enjoys the Zoom, which is awesome. Uh, looking you. for a cigar that can withstand eight or nine holes of golf that's a little bit mellower from our brands. What would you recommend? Uh, for, me, uh, uh, yeah, for me, uh, either the Falone or the, uh, the Gold. I think it was uh, because it's not going to kind of creep up on you. All of a sudden, you're dizzy because there's yeah. too much body. So, I especially hot, uh, dropping in Florida, you don't want that interaction. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to get dizzy. You don't want to feel sick. So, I'm more, if I was playing golf, a lot of my golfing friends suck down some full buy cigars in the garage, but they are always choosing the lighter body cigars yeah. for golf. Yeah. And you have to also uh, pick a, a cigar that would uh, be able to handle getting in, throwing it down to the ground, smoking it, and picking mm -hmm. it up. And so yeah. you need that tougher wrapper. Uh, yeah. So I never would smoke a Cameroon uh, on the golf course because of that reason. I think it's so brewer and it's going to kind of explode on you. But uh, uh, for me, uh, a golfing cigar Outside of the heat, I would uh, choose a mellow or medium body cigar. Yeah, Cohiba Connecticut Toro, great size. It's a six yeah. and a half by fifty-two. Yeah. So it'll last a good while, and and, yeah. and it'll, it'll it'll you know balance well with whatever you're drinking on on the course. Which guys are typically not drinking super heavy. It's beer or whatever. Um, but like I said, it's not going to be an overpowering cigar for the heat. Um, mm -hmm. But it's going to give you enough flavor, and it's going to last long enough. Uh, that that and I and I. That's, I don't golf a lot, but when I do that, that's my cigar yeah. choice. Yeah. But nine and back nine. It's a Toro. Yeah. So number yeah. one cigar that is mentioned to me playing golf is the uh, seven by 70 uh, flathead. Uh, I, 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 I cannot name uh, so many times. Really? Oh, I love your seven by 70 playing golf. 
in the last size, week, yeah, 15 yeah. or 18 hoes and all that. So that's the guard that's just Vincent to me all the time. All the okay. Time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the obvious Macanudo would be the Cafe series, yeah, but sure. I think I would change it up and say the Inspirato, like the Inspirato Churchill. It's a slow yeah. smoker. There's a ton of flavor. Most people are drinking on the golf course. So if you are pairing it with something or you're snacking or you're walking around, it's it's got enough to it that holds your interest, but it doesn't demand your attention. You don't have to keep touching it up. The Churchill's a great size, holds an ash well. So I'd probably do the Inspirato white. Yeah. Um, let's see here. It looks like we might have one more question before we wrap up. Um, what are your thoughts on cigar pins for when you get down to the nub? I hate them. I don't use them. So uh, I've literally never used them. Uh, yeah, yeah, bro. If that is a compliment that you have to use a pin to yes. smoke I got, I got uh, that last. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's a compliment because it only happens when you well age your tobacco. Allows you. It's not you know bitter. It's not something you're, you're done with. So that's a compliment. I don't use that technique. Often, I've never used that, but, uh, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. So as we close this, would you rather, now I've chosen these two bands specifically because they could both survive. Would you rather listen to Fleetwood Mac without Stevie Nicks or listen to the Rolling Stones without Keith Richards? Rolling Stones. Without Rolling Stones. Keith. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. See, you can't take Mick out because he's too integral. Oh. Well. Yeah. What, Stephen Nicks was it? What do you mean? What are you talking okay, about? No, she's no. But, there's so many songs that but, she didn't sing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that, that was easy. Yeah. That was easy. That was that was a layup. Yeah. Okay. Well, fine. I'll come up with a better. You know what? We obviously did not get through today's entire topic. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So, um, <laughs> I'll have a different one for you guys next week. But uh, I just want to thank you guys for joining again, and thank you all for thank joining. Thank you so um, much, guys. This was awesome. Well, I love you guys. I had a great Labor Day weekend. And uh, I'm going to end it. Uh, good luck uh, this weekend, um, Laurel. Uh, we're playing the first fantasy game together. You're going to lose, unfortunately. But uh, good luck for your season. All, what I am saying is Jonathan is texting me tips. <laughs> so he's trying to make sure that uh, yeah, you, you, know, <laughs> you, you need all the help. He's got the eggs already. I mean, you got your players. So it's just <laughs> – not also, like you're going to be like calling it, the X's and O's, right? So yeah. I like the text play on the game. what Saturday. He's like, Rick's talking enough shit to get even Laurel jazzed. <laughs> <laughs> but he was egging like, me on. That's true. He was egging me on. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great week. I love you, you guys. Thank you Take so much. Here, I'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.